Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, it is Dr. Brandy B here for Focus On It Friday. Oh my goodness, y'all. We are in a new month. We are in a new month. Are you all as excited as I am about being in a new month? I am ready to see some things new and nothing beats seeing some things anew like a new month. Oh my goodness. Come on in, come on in, bring a friend and come on in. I am so happy that you all are here with me today. I don't know how to get this live uh, screen off of here. So somebody come on in and make a comment so I can get this example off. Yes, 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 yes. I am so happy to see we have miss rachel hall watching with us thank you so very much guys and i'm looking in two places because my computer screen doesn't show me everything that i need so i end up having to look at my phone to see it um to who's here with me so i see that two people are watching go ahead and make a comment so i can get this silly oh my goodness miss kina bailey my sissy says hello let me see if i can click on this there we go Woohoo! Now I got that sample off. All right. Anybody else? Mama is watching. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining, as you always do, my sissy Kina Bailey, for always watching and keeping up with me. We've got Rachel Hall. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching as well. I am so excited here y'all um to just have y'all here with me today you know it means the world to me because you could be doing any old thing um on a friday but you're here with me so i appreciate that very much looks like this thing is right in the middle of my mouth there we go let's see if we can get that any better all right there we go there we go there we go mama says hello dr brandy b we thank you even got a heart got fancy Thank you so very much, Mama. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started because I was a little bit tardy for this party. I'm Dr. Brandy B., your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist. And through my Facebook um, live stream, Focus on It Friday, through other speaking engagements, and of course, my best-selling book, Shine, Understanding ADHD So Your Child Can Be a Star. I help worried, overwhelmed, um, just exhausted at their wits end. Those moms and dads who are having a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to best get through to their children who have ADHD and other special um, learning disabilities or just other special needs. I help all these people and the teachers that teach and love them get what they need so that they can be successful in the classroom and in life. Please follow me at Dr. Brandy B on all social media. I'm about to start uh, coming back with a very robust YouTube and uh IG, because I know some people don't do Facebook, so I want to be wherever people are because I need to spread to them the good news about ADHD and to restore some hope. Remind people that it is not all bad and that um, that there are very good things that can still happen even in a child who has ADHD and other special needs. I see my cousin Latina uh, Kali Woods is watching. I see my auntie Rosalyn is watching. And we want to say belated happy birthday to my beautiful auntie Rosalyn Young. Uh, she told me that she was, I think she told me she was 21 um, this year on the first. So we are so glad that you are joining us today and we hope that you've had a great birthday week. All right, let's go ahead, get ahead and get started. We're going to talk about today, guys, we're going to talk about um, um, focusing on the midterm report, focusing on the midterm report. Now, in Birmingham City Schools, uh, the kids, I think, are now in their fifth week. Now, they went some years back. Uh, Auntie Rosa says, hello, my sweet niece, Dr. Brandy. And I say hello to you as well. Thank you so much for joining in my cousin, my beautiful cousin Latina. She says, hello, hello to you as well. So some years back, Birmingham City Schools went to a nine week grading period. And I think a lot of schools actually have left the six week and have gone to nine weeks. If your school started as early as my kids did, which was like the, the first Monday in August, that means that they've been in school five weeks. That also means that this week they got progress reports. So your child may not have been in school that long. They may not have had um, time to receive a progress report, but one is coming. And if your school doesn't do progress reports, sooner or later, 
a report card is coming home. And so a lot of parents at this time realize, oh, uh -oh, we're in trouble. So what I want to talk about today is the midterm or the progress report. Um, let's just re um, let's see who, who else is watching. We have Miss Melanie Long is watching. Thank you very much. That doesn't pop up in one place, so I have to look at another. Auntie Miss Sadie Gresham is here, and she says, good afternoon, Dr. Brandy B., and we thank you for joining us like you always do. Y'all are just the best uh, people, the best supporters ever, and I really appreciate you all for your time. Let's talk about this midterm, and this doesn't have to be for the elementary school, the high school. This is college. This is people who are in professional school. This is people who are in graduate school. This is people who are working every day, going to work, but finding that you're missing deadlines. So, oh, we've got Miss Sharonda Hackett uh, with us today. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us on Focus on It Friday. We're talking about the midterm progress report and what that could mean, what parents need to be looking out for. So real brief, let's just talk about ADHD, what it is and what it isn't, okay? ADHD has nothing to do with your diet. If your kid doesn't eat sweets, um, but they they have ADHD, oh my goodness, they're still going to be hyperactive. But guess what? If you take sweets from them, they won't get dental caries or cavities and they won't be overweight. So yay, strong work for that. But they'll still have ADHD. They'll still be just as hyperactive. Now, you as a parent may swear that they are not as hyperactive when they don't have all that sugar. And there may be a little bit of truth to that. But when it comes to ADHD, you cannot diet away ADHD. You may see some subtle improvements, but you can't diet away ADHD. Um, my auntie says, how do I feel about the students in Bessemer yesterday? Um, so it, for those of you who don't know, because we have people watching us from everywhere, all around the country and outside of the country as well. We have uh, Miss Tiffany Turner. Thank you for joining us. She says, good afternoon, Dr. Bowling. That's my cousin, y'all. That is my cousin. We thank you for joining. So the students in Bessemer, Alabama yesterday, the high school students at Bessemer City High School, they mm -hmm. had a peaceful protest for um, some um, what they thought were... I guess they thought that COVID was not being taken seriously. And so they had a peaceful protest in objection to uh, <clears throat> in objection to the way that the COVID situation was being handled at their school. And I will say this, you know, first of all, I'm all in favor of peaceful protests. So kudos to them as thinking young adults and, you know, who decided that they needed to stand up for what they thought was right. You know, I feel like there may be some missing information there. I don't know that I have a whole lot of details to know, um, to have a whole lot of feelings about it. I know that I don't, I, I know how I feel about my kids having to go to school. I don't want them to go. Um, but I know that I have to work. I know that um, them being here with me last year um, was okay. Um, and they did great. But that's just because I have students for children who do well academically, but I know that they miss out on some other things that being in school will afford a student. You know, so I really just don't know enough about what happened in Bessemer yesterday with those students um, to know, to have a whole lot of feelings about it. I think that in general, around the country, we are doing the best we can. I think that some systems definitely got it right in the beginning and had their students wearing masks and also had their students, you know, socially distancing and doing as much as we could can. Um, and then we have some other systems that didn't do that. And we see that their numbers are increasing. And so I work around the state of Alabama in different parts. And um, I definitely can tell where masks are in place and where they are not because the number of students that have COVID in those school systems are much higher than in others. So I know that kind of skirted around the issue of what happened in Bessemer, but like I said, kudos to the students for having a peaceful protest, not rioting and tearing up the lunchroom, uh, you know, or doing anything out of order, but simply saying we have some concerns about this. And then kudos for uh, the city, the leaders, the school leaders who responded and said, okay, let's go home and do virtual learning for 
tomorrow, which is today. And of course, they're out of school Monday. So I think that, you know, teaching is really hard now. And of course, being a, a leader of a school system as a superintendent, I can't imagine how hard that can be. And I can't imagine what the legal folks are doing on these school systems too. So it's just a very hard thing. And while we want to say keep them at home, for some kids, that's really, it protects them from a health standpoint, but it may not, uh, it, you know, from a mental health place. So it's a very loaded question, a very loaded situation. And everybody's just out here doing the best they can. I, I'm just glad to see that the leaders responded in what, you know, is probably considered appropriate for the school students. That's what they wanted. Um, and we just really have to be in prayer and do what we feel is best. Um, I will just go ahead and put a plug in right here to say that um, vaccinations save our lives, right? We don't know of polio right now because the people before us got vaccinated for it. We don't know of chicken pox right now. My children will likely never see chicken pox. Um, and you may say, well, it's just chicken pox. And you may think, oh my goodness, that's just what happens in childhood, except that the chicken pox virus, it goes and lies dormant, and then it comes back many years later as shingles. So shingles is very painful, and people live with it for a very long time. But because of a vaccination, um, you know, we we don't we won't see that anymore. I won't ever see that. So vaccinations save lives. They certainly change lives. Wearing masks changes lives and saves lives. And so that's the biggest thing that we could be doing anywhere. Our high school students, our 12 and older students. And then when the time comes for you to get your third um, vaccination, make sure that you go and do that as well. Um, I, and my auntie Raza follows up by saying, I think everything was done decent and in order, the students and the leaders. And I would agree with that. It's just a very hard situation right now for everybody involved. Good question, though. Thank you very much. I see my cousin Anne-Marie is joining. Thank you so much for joining us, Anne-Marie. Anne-Marie, will you tell the people where you are calling from? You're not a Southern girl, but we appreciate you uh, joining all the same. We've got Miss Melanie Long watching. Um, and I think that's it um, that is watching right now that I can actually see their names. So we're talking about ADHD. We're talking about um, the midterm, the midterm, right? And so we know that ADHD can affect children and adolescents alike and adults and adults. ADHD can affect adults. If you have a child with ADHD, look once to the right for you. Look, one to the right for the other parent, one of you all, 40% or 50%, whether you're the mom or the dad, is likely to have it. So that means that you have it too, right? We just know what it is now, and we know how to go about treating it to make these lives, these children's lives better. I, I, I started off by saying, you know, let's just talk about what ADHD, ADHD is. There are three types, so no more is there ADD. There are three types of ADHD, all right? They are the predominantly inattentive type. I am glad to uh, catch you on live. Yes, so glad that you are here. Thank you so much for joining Ms. Michelle Scott Shorts. We are here and we are live. Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. So three types of ADHD, the predominantly inattentive presentation, the predominantly hyperactive impulsive presentation, and then the combined presentation. Predominantly inattentive, these are going to be kids who lose things, forget things, they're easily distracted, they're disorganized, they procrastinate, they rush, they make careless mistakes. They do not listen when being spoken to. I call it like the wheels are churning. They're turning, <clears throat> but they're not clicking in gear, like just wheels turning. And so when you ask them a question, they're like, there's like this delay. They got to figure out. What did you ask? What do I need to say? What's going to be the right answer? And she, you know, all of that is going on. And so there's this lag and you're like, what? Okay. Or I call it the lights are on, but nobody's home. You ask them a question. They don't respond. You say their name. They don't respond. They don't respond. And then when you scream it, they're like, why are you screaming? And you say, because I called your name four times and you didn't respond. Okay. Book bags that are out of sort, always leaving stuff, always forgetting stuff. Purses and keys and cell phones. Oh my, where are they? We don't know. We just keep multiplying. We're leaving everything. Can't find anything. Always running late. Always running late. Why? 
because they procrastinated, don't know how to budget time. So they end up running out of time. Same things like, oh my goodness, time got away from me. Well, time only gets away from people who didn't have a plan. And so you let it sneak up on you and get away from you. So that is what can happen when you have inattentive symptoms. Now, the hyperactive symptoms, everybody knows those. Talkative, loud, blurting, interrupting, can't stay seated, fidgeting, um, always on the go, acting as if driven by a motor. Sometimes kids will say, mommy, I want to stop, but I can't. And then, of course, the combined presentation is going to be when you have symptoms from inattention, symptoms from hyperactivity, impulsivity, and we call that the combined presentation. Miss Michelle says, thank you for signing my copy of your book. Thank you for purchasing my book. I hope you've been enjoying it. I certainly, certainly, certainly am so grateful that each of you who has purchased my book has um, taken your money to do so, all right? And um, that you're also telling me about how great it is. So thank you all so very much for doing that. Of course, you can get the book, like it says at the banner down below, www.adh, I'm sorry, www.shineadhdbook.shop, www.shineadhdbook.shop. Thank you so very much. Okay, so that's what ADHD is. Well, now at the midterm, what might be happening? So we talked a little bit, I think it was last week about the, the behavior system that my son's teachers use. One of them <clears throat> uses a check mark, red, green, and yellow, um, <clears throat> like a stop sign. Red means you did not have a good day behaviorally. Yellow means that you were okay, but on the fence, she had to bring some things to your attention. Green means you had a good day. And then sometimes she will add a smiley face to the green as well. Now, my other son's teacher, she uses a straw system. Everybody starts off with six straws at the beginning of the day. And as you um, behave in an inappropriate fashion, whether behaviorally, um, you know, can't be not being able to control yourself or whatever, you lose straws. So you could come home with all straws or you could come home with no straws based on how your behaviors with that day. <clears throat> so, if you have noticed, mom and dad, that your child is coming home with yellow or red checks or whatever the equivalent is, some people are moving clips in the classroom. That's another common behavioral tip. So whatever it is that your child is doing, um, um, whatever your child is doing, you want to know about it. You want to ask questions, right? So when Franklin... My kindergartner comes home and he doesn't have all his straws. If he's got five straws, I want to know, well, why do you have five straws? And he might say, well, because I talk too much in class. Okay, not a big deal. You've got five straws, right? And so we had open house last night. She explained that to lose two or three straws, not a huge deal. To lose all of your straws every day is a big deal. Now, the thing of the matter is that everybody has an off day. Everybody has an off day. But if your child is coming home consistently on the um, less desirable end of whatever the behavioral thing is, at this midterm, you need to be checking in with, this, with the teacher to figure out why. If you're a kid, if you're looking at the calendar and they get red, yellow, green, and they've got more yellows and uh, reds than greens, you need to be checking in with why. The teacher may say some things like uh, to you like, if it's a girl, she's very talkative. She talks all the time. Now, if you come from my family, that just could be what you do. You talk all the time. I talk all the time. I'm still talking. Look at me. I'm talking for a living now in some respects. I, well, yeah, I do. I talk for a living. I listen mostly, but then I talk for a living. So that might be a good thing. But then if they tell you that your, your son is always out of his seat, he's blurting answers. He doesn't raise his hand. He's talking loud. He's making animal noises. He's on the floor. She's on the floor. She's looking out the window. She's hitting her neighbor. All of these things at this midterm may make you think that perhaps something is going on. Now, what might you notice at this midterm with your middle school child, your middlers? You may notice that particularly your seventh grader may be more easily distracted, but their symptoms really are going to be presenting as irritability, anxiety, and even what will look like frank depression. So if you bring your child to me and you say, 
This girl is anxious. She has anxiety. I have it and she has it too. And you leave with a diagnosis of ADHD, don't be shocked. Because oftentimes it can present in the adolescent girl and guy with anxiety as anxiety or depression. The high school student, the same. Anxiety and depression as well. We tend to get a lot of depression in people. Why is that? Because you know that you are an AB student, but more and more, you're finding that your grades are slipping, but the same things that you were doing before are not working. Why is that? The work is getting harder. The volume is increasing. Um, and then you're pulled in all kinds of directions. You have more distractions. You're driving. You have a job. You have extracurricular activities. You didn't. You weren't able to do all of that stuff in the sixth grade, and so now it's becoming a problem at this midterm. What do I want to say to you parents? Nip it in the bud right now. What you want to do, mom and dad, is ask your student, why did you get this grade? Is it because you didn't understand? Or is it because you got distracted? Or is it because you were confused? Or is it because you were rushing? If they start telling you, I just wasn't paying attention, I was rushing, I made careless mistakes, you better start thinking about ADHD. And parents, it's very important to not just get on your kid about their grades. Keep in mind that every student wants to make all A's. And at the beginning of the year, every student had all A's. They are starting to lose them now. And this is where I need you all to say, let me find out why. So it's not enough to just fuss at them. I'm going to take your phone from them. We need to figure out why. It is, it is not okay, parents, to say, my child can't have ADHD because he makes on a roll. My child cannot have ADHD because she makes on a roll. Many a person can make on a roll and still be struggling, right? How do you know they're struggling? Because the, the two sheets of paper that they have for homework that total 10 questions take three hours. Either they don't understand it, they can't focus, or then you start getting over the other stuff. They're anxious, they have a learning disability, something else is going on. But the first things you want to know is, did you not understand it? Or get you, did you get distracted? Did you have the assignment with you and forget to turn it in? If your teacher is telling you, <clears throat> oh my goodness, he didn't turn in the assignment. And you're like, boy, we set up the midnight. Why did you not turn it in? I put it in your book bag. I put it at the door. Then I put it in the car, just like Dr. Brandy B said. Why did you not turn it in? I know it was in there. Consistently, children with ADHD forget, remember forgetfulness, they forget to turn in their homework. All right? So if your child is forgetting to do their homework or to turn it in, this could be one of those mid-turn clues. My Auntie Brenda, thank you for watching. She says, I guess if I get my book and read it, I will know. But is it hereditary? It absolutely is, right? So um, if you look at a child with ADHD and look at the parents, 50% of dads are going to have it, 40% of moms will. If you've got a child and both parents has ADHD, then there is an even higher chance that that child will as well. If you've got a sibling with ADHD, your child is more likely to have it. That, that sibling is more likely to have it. If, you've, if you're a twin of someone with ADHD, you're more likely to have it, to have it as well. All right. I see my sister Ernestine Wilson is watching. Thank you so very much. She is an educator. We thank our educators so much. So don't get mad at the teacher when the teacher calls you every day because that's what they're going to do because your child is a disruption. Now, those, those young kids are a disruption to the class. They're talking loud. They're blurting. They're interrupting. They've had their straws withdrawn. They are on red and yellow. Uh, they're standing up. Somebody told me their kid got put in a corner. I didn't know that we were doing that anymore, but, you know, um, some school systems still spank kids to get a paddle, right? Parents have to get permission for that. I think each time they have to be notified, but this is, these are all things that are district dependent, okay? Um, but if the teacher has been calling you and saying all of this, just stop and think about who is most impacted and more than likely it's your child. All right. Now, what are some other things? There are some other tips that you can look for. And I'm just going to tell y'all, but y'all promise not to tell anybody else. So, cause we want them to get the book. If your child chews on their collar, if your child chews on their sleeve, if your child twirls at the knees of their pants, if your child spins around in the chair, 
if your child just blurts out loud, yells for no reason, if your child is extremely irritable and moody, if your child seems to be depressed, your older child, if your adolescent has a lot of motor vehicle wrecks or speeding tickets, if your child is starting to experiment with drugs, and shockingly, the first drug use can come as early as 10 and 11 years old, right? Usually from someone they know, somebody you've left them with, an older sibling, an older cousin, uh, sometimes even the other parent. So, you know, you just got to be, be, be mindful of that, who you leave your children with. Um, all of these can be signs that ADHD is at play. And so what is it um, going to mean for you to get your child evaluated? If you have concerns, the first thing you need to do is speak with the teacher, right? Because it could be uh, pretty typical and developmentally appropriate for your child's age to want to play, to not be able to stay in their seat for eight hours straight, for seven hours straight. I have to get up every once in a while, too. So it could be developmentally normal and you just don't know. But you need to ask the question. You need to ask the question. Talk with the teachers. The teachers are our friends. If you go over to www.adhdsuccess.me, I'm going to type it in here, A-D-H-D-S-U-C-C-E-S-S dot -S -S me for free uh, tips on ADHD and school success. It's a video of me done by uh, my auntie Brenda's son, um, Mr. Andre, Dre, Dre Rudolph. Um, we did a video and it's I give seven tips to get your kid through the school year successfully. You want to listen to that. Um, it'll also put you on my email list so you can hear about uh, uh, very exciting things that will be coming up soon. Um. But yes, oh, and let me just put my, my book link in there, www.shineadhdbook.shop, because somebody may want the book, all right? Somebody may want the book, just $20. If you order through this link, I will autograph it. If you get it anywhere else, Amazon, Walmart, Tar Target, or wherever you purchase books, uh, then I don't know that you purchased it, and so it won't be autographed, all right? But I want you all to know that ADHD is very real. I want you to know that if your child is already at this point having trouble in school, this is the time to help them. The wait to see me and anybody else like me is three to five months. So if you wait until December when they fail this semester to try to seek help, it may be March, April, or May before you get in. And what does that mean? They're going to repeat the grade. That's what the teachers are going to propose, that they repeat the grade. Now, you know you don't want your child to repeat the grade. I know that I don't want your child to repeat the grade. But more importantly, I don't want your child's self-esteem to be ruined. Once a child's self-esteem is ruined academically, it is very hard to get it back. And all the spankings in the world, all the threatening in the world, all the removing the cell phones in the world, all the taking extracurricular activities in the world, all telling them they can't go to the other spouse or the grandparents' house in the world, all the taking sweets in the world, everything that you can do. If your child has ADHD, they are going to have to be treated. They're going to have to be treated. Um, and so hopefully you're able to to see the signs, see the symptoms, the talkative behaviors in your girls, those subtle grades, those Ds, those Ds on tests that you're like, this is not my student. You better start looking at them right now because it could be a problem for you very, very soon. Remember, I always talk to you about the odd numbered grades. So particularly third grade gets to be pretty dangerous because kids are not really moving all that much. They're no longer as hyperactive as they had been, but their brains are still moving when the teacher is teaching critical pieces of curriculum. And then fifth grade, a lot of kids will fail fifth grade. Seventh grade, they come in with irritability, anxiety, depression. That's what parents bring them in for. Ninth grade, I know kids are not doing well in ninth grade, but most people pass that off as, 
oh my goodness, we just went to high school and that's what's to be expected. The child is getting adjusted. Seventh grade, let me warn you, there's always what we call in medicine a red herring, which means that something else in life happens that we use to explain what's going on. Divorce, changing school, um, someone dies, and or the most common is he or she is beginning adolescence. And so that's why they're so irritable. Watch out for that. Yes, you should be irritable, but your grades should not be impacted with it. So watch out for that. Um, and again, the grades may be the same. So do not use grades as the ter determining factor for whether or not a child can have ADHD. Um, and then, of course, we talked about ninth graders and then 11th graders. As uh, your really good students are preparing for ACT, they realize something is not right. Now, what happens if you miss your child getting diagnosed in, in high school, in elementary school? No worries. Really smart kids with ADHD will manage to go on, but only 5 to 10% of children who have untreated ADHD will graduate high school. So sometimes when these kids, you know, here in, in Birmingham, we have UAB, the University of Alabama at Birmingham. But sometimes I say UAB means you are back. Uh, my One of my good friends who's on the call say that a relative of theirs was uninvited to return back. Right. So if you don't want your child to be uninvited to turn uh, to come back to class in the spring or if you don't want to be back at home with your parents, it may not be that they went and party. Right. Everybody's not just going and flunking out of college in the first semester because they partied. It may be because they couldn't focus. Right. Parents, you either didn't want them treated. You were in denial because let's admit it. Denial is real. People were talking about I'm not claiming it. That teacher just white and it's my black son. Y'all know y'all have heard people say that before, but I want you to know that as a black psychiatrist, I have diagnosed many a black boy and black girl and white boy and white girl and Asian girl and Asian boy and a Latino boy and Latina girl with ADHD, right? So it does not matter. I think that we've got to... Um, be honest with ourselves about what's going on. Be vigilant, be mindful, be open-minded um, and be prayerful, right? Because we got a lot going on. We got coronavirus going on. That's another distraction because they got masks on. Um, but we really need these kids to focus. My sister-in-law, Angela Bowler says, hello, I'm in here. You made it, girl. Hello, hello, hello. She's got on her picture her... Um, her uh, law school son, who finished college two years ago, I believe, and um, sixth grade daughter, sixth grade daughter. All right. What questions do y'all have for me? Any questions, any comments today? Any questions, any comments, thoughts, anything you want to know? Any burning questions, burning desires? Um, this is the time. Let's go ahead and talk about it. The midterm progress report. You need to look deeper than just the A and the B. If your child is an A student, you need to figure out why B. Why? Why'd you go to B? Was it a really hard subject? You know, like, remember what I said. Did you not understand it? Or did you get distracted? Did you make a careless mistake? Were you rushing? Did you run out of time? Running out of time. Kids, I think about third, fourth, or fifth grade, you started getting timed stuff. That's another thing that happens in there. Time stuff is the enemy of ADHD because these kids get distracted. A bird's chirping, a car passing by, the fire truck passing, a motorcycle, somebody passes gas in the class, somebody's tapping their pencil in the class, drumming, because people with ADHD are always fidgeting and moving their hands. All of that is distracted. And then they're looking out the window and the teacher says five minutes and they have 20 questions. All right. Uh, Auntie Brenda says, I thank God for you, Dr. B, and your assistance to the family. Absolutely. That is what I am here to do. If I am not help helping families, my family, your family, your family, your family, your family, then I am just up here making noise. And Lord knows I could be napping. So I am here to help families. I really do. As I say, I want all kids to be successful in the classroom and in life. I was, um, y'all know I do telemedicine mostly. So uh, most day I, I get dressed up for y'all because y'all are my people. 
But on Fridays, I mean, the rest of the days, y'all, Monday through Thursday, I'm over here with T-shirts on and whatever else because I'm out here in the jungle and I'm fighting. Um, and the shirt that I put on yesterday, it said, all children are gift. All children are gifted. They just open their package differently. And that, oh my goodness, that really spoke to me because some parent out there is trying to compare one child to the other and they're getting all kinds of flustered and upset because, um, you know, they're like, this child doesn't have, they, this child has a disability. But what I like to say is this child has this, T-H-I-S, ability. And we as parents, myself included, we have to help our children we have to help them foster their gifts, foster their abilities, because they all have them. But it's our responsibility to parent the child we got and not the one we ordered, prayed for, called up, are still hoping for, are still longing for, because that only frustrates us and makes their life more difficult. If we could just say, you know what, this child has ADHD, this child has autism, this child has a learning disorder. This child has diabetes. This child has uh, a reading disorder. This child's a vision disorder. This child is missing a leg. This child is missing a toe. This child is left-handed. This child has, um, you know, only one eye, one kidney. This child has a hole in the heart. This child has asthma. This child has bronchitis. This child got chicken pox despite having the vaccine. This child has COVID. I can't tell y'all how many children I'm seeing with COVID. Um, of course, I'm seeing, them, you know, they at their house and I'm in mine. Mm -mm, okay. Um, all of these are illnesses, right? And we have to address them head on if we want our children to really be successful. Um, Miss Savannah Gann, let's see what she says. She says, with well, a behavior chart, what would be the best things to add to the behavior chart at home? Oh, my goodness. That is an amazing question, Miss Savannah Gann. Thank you so much. So behavior charts. Um, and we have a whole presentation on that, I don't know, probably two or three months ago. It's entitled, Everybody Says My Child is B-A-D, or it's like focus on the child who is B-A-D. Um, and op oppositional defiant disorder, ODD, is one of the most commonly uh, co-occurring disorders with ADHD, which means that if you see a child with ODD, look for ADHD, but not vice versa. So behavior charts work really well just not for kids with ODD. They work well for people in general, behavior charts. So a behavior chart, um, I don't have one readily available, but it is where you basically think of it as a time card for an adult, right? So your time card, if you're not salaried, you use it every day when you get there, you clock in, you clock out for lunch, you clock back in, you clock out when you go home and you do that over and over and over and over and over until you retire, they make you salary. What happens if you show up late? They dock your pay. What happens if uh, they promise to dock your pay for showing up late, but they never do it? But then you get a new boss and he does it. Now you cut up. This is a behavior chart. It tracks your behavior. And there is proof that you showed up late, didn't clock back in, came back from lunch late, whatever. The behavior is documented. That's what we do um, with the same thing with a behavior chart for children. You want to make sure that with a behavior chart, you are doing um, Sunday through Saturday, however you start your week with seven days, and you want to have at least five objectives for the child to meet. Now, what to include, Miss Savannah, on the behavior chart is going to depend upon what your child has struggles accomplishing, all right, what they struggle with accomplishing. Some common things that parents mention is that the child who get who doesn't want to get up on time. So getting up, making your bed, brushing your teeth, on um, washing up, putting your clothes in the hamper when you come back home or when you wake up in the morning, um, doing your homework as soon as you get home, clearing the table. These are all some things that parents uh, have mentioned that have been problematic for them and their child. Now, what you want to do, Miss Savannah, is have... Of the five things, the child will need to get four of them right to get some prize, to get some prize. Now, I know grandmamas out there in the world who have raised your children and they are all perfect. Okay. 
they're probably not that perfect if you're raising your grandchildren. But I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay. They got some problems too. But the grandparents of the world say, I don't pay no child to do what they're supposed to do. Well, if you aren't doing anything different, you aren't going to get any different results. Right? And so while it's true that the the basics of parenting kids in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even 90s may be the same. The way you have to approach it and the way that you have to reach these children um, is, a, is is potentially is different, okay? What does the award, reward needs to, need to be, Miss Savannah? It needs to be something that the child wants. So for example, with your behavior chart, when you come to work every day and you punch in as they tell you, if they say we're going to pay you in eggs, you never show up for that job. If they say we're going to pay you in more time to work, we're going to reward you by allowing you to come back. Well, that's not sufficient because your local power company needs something else. All right. But when they start talking cash, you show up, you show up on time, you stay late if you need to, you do whatever you need to do to keep your job. And the same with the behavior chart for children. If you promise them a Hershey's kiss every day and they don't like chocolate, they're not going to be interested in doing what you want them to do. So what is so really the the reason that behavior charts fail, Miss Savannah, is a couple of reasons. One is that parents aren't consistent. You've got to be consistent. You have you're changing behaviors, which means that all the things that children have done for their entire lives, you're trying to change it. It's not going to happen overnight. The other thing is that you need to do a survey of what it is that your children don't do just sit down and think after you put them to bed one night on a Saturday when they're watching cartoons or whatever. What do I always say to my child? What do I always say to my child? Okay, I can think of five things I'm always screaming to hear to my children. Those are the things you want to put on the chart. And I did not mention that one of those things needs to be something that the child automatically does on their own. That way they can get at least one check mark every day. You don't completely break their spirit but they need to get four out of five and everybody needs to be consistent, not just you. So if you say you get four out of five and you will get to watch the TV for 30 minutes, well, they get three out of five and daddy comes home and says, well, you got three today. Uh, we'll just give you five minutes. Wrong answer because tomorrow when daddy's not at home and you're there alone trying to get the child to do four, they're going to cut up something awful on you and daddy hadn't made it home from work yet. Now we got a situation. All right. So they need to know that everybody is doing the same thing, just like at work. Certain bosses will let people get away with things and that creates problems for the other boss. Hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully that answered your question. All right. Let's see where we are. Go back over there. So my sister-in-law is laughing. I don't know what you're laughing at, Angie. Uh, my auntie Brenda says, amen, probably to raising the child that you have. Miss Sadie says, so true. My auntie Brenda says, wish I had learned this or at least listened and paid attention when my children were younger. But that's OK. That is OK. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that come with. Um, and by the way, your children turned out wonderfully. So if something was going on with them. They're doing OK. And, you know, and a lot of parents will say, well, I turned out just fine. And the first thing I ask them is, did you do? Did you go as far as you could have? Did you go as far as you could have? Did you struggle? Did it take you longer to do assignments? Did you miss out on stuff either because you were stuck doing homework that everybody else had long finished? Or did you just take a B or a C or even a D and just say, forget it, when in actuality you could have earned an A or a B or a C? Um, but, but you just gave up. You just gave up on college. You said it's too much. You just gave up on high school. You said it's too much. You just gave up on becoming what it was that you wanted to become, but you became what you're doing now. You're doing okay. You're not homeless, but you sure aren't what you know that you could have been. Do you want that for it? So the answer is always, yeah. And then the next question is, do you want that for your child? And that's usually enough to get most parents to, you know, reconsider, reconsider. All right. Let's see what else we got. Um, Mama says great information. Yes, yes, yes. Miss Savannah says, thank you so much. I hope that was very helpful. And, um, Oh, the jungle. Yes, girl. I be in the jungle over here. Look, I don't have on no makeup. I, one day my husband said, are you working today? I said, look, these people aren't coming over here for my good looks. I mean, I have them, but they are not coming because I'm cute. They are coming because they need help. Had a mama call today that said, look, the pharmacy is tripping, but Monday is a holiday. Can Dr. Rudolph get this medicine phone in today? 
right? And I and I have, I, that's why I thank my staff. I don't see them watching today. My nurses are amazing. And if you uh, see me as a patient, you know how amazing my nurses are. I don't play about my nurses because they do not play about me. They will fight a lion for me and I will fight one for them. Maybe a little toy lion on both ways, but a lion nonetheless. Um, because we are out here doing what we have to do to really get these babies taken care of. And long before there was a Dr. Brandy B, you can tell, you can talk to anybody that's ever worked with me. I don't complain a lot. Uh, my mama says every day, how many patients did you see? I saw them all. I don't know how many I saw. I saw them all. I saw them until they stopped coming because I really, I believe this is my calling. So when you're operating in your gift, work is never work. It's fun. Now, you got to pay me because I ain't over here for free. Y'all see, I got three kids. They back to back. So three of them will be in college at the same time at some point. So I got to start saving up now, right? So buy my book. No, nah, I'm just kidding. The book is really good, though. Um, I've gotten really good reviews. If you've read the book, go over to Amazon and leave me a, um, a review over there. That'll help other moms and dads and teachers to know what the book is about. It'll also help me to know if you bought the book, because if you got it from Amazon or some other site other than mine, I actually don't know that you got it. I actually don't know that you got it. Any more questions before we get out of here? Any more questions? Remember, watch out for that kid who is just kind of absent-minded. Watch out for that kid who's always forgetting something, leaving something, being disorganized, um, procrastinating, then rushing. And then when we get into those middle school years, uh, getting irritable, getting anxious. And then when we get into high school years, um, having that depression, just being sad, being down. And for heaven's sake, we do not want these kids to self-medicate because that's what will end up happening. They they end up self-medicating oftentimes and we don't watch that, want that. I see Miss Lovey Banks is watching. Thank you. I don't see anyone else that I did not speak to. Um, so thank you all for hanging in here with me. Hopefully this was helpful about the midterm progress report. Make sure you're talking to your teachers. Talk to them. Teachers will tell you all the time, oh, this, your student is great. Your student is great. And then when you get them to complete a Vanderbilt, they they score all these things way over to the right on the chart. And you're like, but you told me it was great. It was great compared to other kids. But when they had to be forced to just focus on your child, they noticed that they were staring out the window. They noticed that they were doodling on their paper, doodling on your paper, right? That if you're doodling and making these extrinsic, uh, e elaborate drawings on your paper, you're not listening to the teacher, right? So then you don't know the answer when she asks the question. Have your kids read a story and then tell them to put it down after a blank page and tell you what it was about. If they can't come up with something that makes sense, they weren't paying attention, they were calling words. Remember, reading is an active process and it's not just active out of your mouth. Reading is what your brain is doing such that when you're asked the question, you can tell the, the listener, or answer the question about what did you just read? What was this main idea? Who was the main character? And if you have not been actively reading and calling for concentration, then you won't know. That's what your grade is coming. That's your English grade. That's your language arts grade. Your math is simple fact comment, simple fact, factual information. You either know three times three or you don't. Or you could know what three times three means, right? Three plus three plus three. But again, that's a fact. Did you recall the fact? If you are not focusing, you cannot recall definitions. You cannot recall simple facts. You're going to struggle every time. You're going to struggle every time. Let's see what we got over here. Thank you so much for your good information. Love you. Great information, says Miss Sadie. The first coming was from my Auntie Roslyn. Um, Miss Tara Nation says, how do you determine their gift to help nurture it? Oh, that's a very good question. How do you determine their gift? How do you determine their gift? Tell me what you mean by that. Like, um, what interests them or what they're good at or what they want to be? Tell me what you mean when you say determine their gift, Miss Nation. Tell me what you mean by that. Um, we're going to wait for her to give us a response because I realize I'm delayed. It's delayed on you all's end. Tell me what you mean by that, because I want to answer that question. That's a good one. How to determine their gift so that we can help nurture it. You know, I, I while you're responding, Miss Nation, I hope you're still on. While you're responding, I know a lot of times I'll have a kid. And, and you know, one of the things that I pride myself on is that when parents say to me, well, what do you see for the future, Doc? 
I don't see nothing for the future. I I mean, I have every day, let me tell y'all this secret. Don't tell nobody I told y'all this, but every day when I go to work, I have a crystal ball. But I make a sharp right turn as I have to go into the parking lot. Actually, as I come downstairs for the last year and a half. And I drop it. And then it breaks. And I put it in the shop at the end of every day. And then I do the same thing. How clumsy of me to break a crystal ball every day. It's so expensive and it's beautiful. But that means that I can't tell the future when I'm at work. So all I can do is tell you to look at the child you have and parent that one. Foster whatever gifts they have, whatever interests they have. You know, I'll have parents and I can tell that this child uh, has some challenges academically, intellectually. And they'll say something like, I want to be a doctor. And their parent will really believe that. And I'm not going to be the one to tell them that they probably won't be a doctor. Um, but what I might say is, can we think of some things that you might like? To, sounds like you like helping people. You want to work in the hospital. What are some things you can do in the hospital? And then we'll go for that. And, and that way, I'm not ruining anybody's hopes and dreams because that's not what I'm here to do. ADHD is does that all on its own. It is the official dream killer. So if you want to kill a dream, let a child go with ADHD undiagnosed and untreated. That will certainly do it. Um, Miss Miss Nate Miss Nation did not respond, but hopefully that gave you all some answer about that determining their gifts. Talk to your children. Make sure you're talking to them and not at them. There's a huge difference. Listen to your children. Um, you know, I had a dad yesterday. I was telling him his child was autistic. We, I've been telling him this for for a long time, um, probably about a good year. And he said he asked his son, who's a late teenager now. What was he proud of about himself? And the boy said uh, his high GPA, and he gave a number. Well, the boy doesn't have that GPA. And the dad said to him, well, you ought to be proud of. And I said, see, that's that you are projecting onto him what it is that you want him to be proud of. You're comparing him to other children. Let him be proud of what he is. And if he's named that number, let's say, well, that's awesome, son. And it sounds like to me, you want to have that number. What can we do to get you to that number? You know, and then if you want to encourage him to think of other things he may be proud of, then maybe you would say something like, are there any other things that you're proud of? But when you say you it looks like to me, you ought to be proud of this and you ought to be proud of your good looks and you ought to you're comparing him to somebody else. You're trying to make him into a child that he's not. He's not proud of that. He's proud of this. But he actually didn't have that. But let's get him to the point where he does, because at least he recognizes that that's a really good thing. All right. OK, there we go. Let's see. Miss Michelle says, thank you for taking time to keep us informed. Absolutely. I get my kicks out of doing this and I hope it's, in, it's helpful for you all. We've got Miss Tara. She says, I've never been able to figure out my purpose and I don't want that for my son. Right now, he's lazy and doesn't want to do anything. Uh oh, Miss Nation. Uh oh, y'all. She said the L word. She said the L word. Now. If you've been listening to me, you know that the L word is cold for ADHD. Now, parents say lazy. Children say, I don't have the motivation. Both of those, until proven otherwise, equal ADHD to me. But I also recognize that I'm a hammer, so everything I see is a nail, right? But lazy is cold. Remember, they procrastinate. They can't get started. Um, you know, Miss Nation, as far as helping your child find a purpose, I don't know that that's something that, you know, maybe you're, I don't know the age of your child, um, but um, that may be something that is going to come with time, right? He looks to be a young fellow in the picture with you, right? I'm just coming into my purpose maybe two to five years ago. I went to med school thinking I was going to be a pediatrician. It wasn't until med school that my mentor said to me, I want you to think about a subspecialty. And from there, I went and I found um, this triple board program. And so I was able to do adult psych, child psych, and pediatrics. And the chair of the, the department, who was an autism specialist, requested that I work with him for my um, outpatient clinicals. And I just thought, well, they're going to give me one last chance before they kick me out. They're going to put me with him. Turns out I love autism. I don't talk about autism a lot um, because my thing is ADHD, but I actually love autism. 
I didn't know I was going to like ADHD either. I didn't know that teaching and educating parents and teachers about ADHD would be the thing that really drives me. But oh my goodness, I'm so glad I found it. And ironically, the thing that really got this started, and I don't see her on the line today, was two years ago. Um, and I've given several talks at my church, but two years ago, the first lady at my church, the pastor's wife, asked me to do a presentation on ADHD. They always ask me to talk about everything else. Nobody ever asked me to talk about ADHD. And I, and I got super excited and I wrote out this outline and I said, I'm going to write a book. And I did that presentation. It went well. It was free. It was well attended. Of course, that was pre-COVID. Um, we had a great time. And then about that December, the Lord would not let me sleep because I was supposed to be writing a book with the outline that I did in September. This was of uh, 19. Okay, I was supposed to be doing that book. And so, so purpose is something that will come. Purpose comes with focus and clarity. Clarity is synonymous with focus. If your child can't focus, they can't have clarity. And if your child can't have clarity, they may not find purpose. But I wouldn't worry so much right now about a purpose for your child. I would support whatever it is that they're doing. You know, my husband is an attorney. I'm a physician. But when my children tell me that they want to be a fireman and a police officer and the two-year-old, you know, she's just doing whatever she want to do. I support that because that's appropriate at this age. I don't need to tell them about anything else. I need to let them be individuals. Now, we tell them that whatever career they choose, that's the lifestyle they'll live because this is my lifestyle, mine and my husband. We've afforded this one for us. And we will share it with them until they get to where they can do whatever they need to do on their own. But I won't be affording them this lifestyle forever. So they need to choose wisely. Right? Everybody's not meant for college. And that's okay. And you don't have to be, go to college. To, you know, some of the people, some of the, I think Google, that guy dropped out. Apple, he dropped out. All these people are college dropouts. But they had something else. They weren't the L word. They weren't lazy. Uh, but remember, the, the L word is usually a symbol for something else. Parents, remember, your children want to please you. They want to please you. They really do. So if they are not, something is going on. Check it out. Check it out. It doesn't have to be with me. Start with your pediatrician. Pray about it. Pray about it. I believe in prayer. I pray with my patients. I cry with them. I do whatever. But at the end of the day, we have to make action, right? We have to make action because faith without works, y'all know the rest, doesn't do anything. So we've got to move if we want to see things change. All right. I appreciate y'all giving y'all's uh, time to me. I really do. Um, you know, there's time and there's money and everybody has more of one than the other. And time, no matter how much money you have, is still very precious, which is why people uh, protect their time the most, right? I know I do. I protect my time the most. I have to watch what I allow in my space. I, my friends will tell you. My mom will tell you. Everybody, tell, I don't have time. I do not. I cannot entertain stuff that is not positive because I'm very much positive. I'm very much like, I don't know how many patients I saw today. I saw all of them. Let's get it done. Let's get this work done. There's a lot of work out there to be done. We can do it. Everybody out there can find your passion. And Miss Nation, I'm going to think about that question a little bit more um, as far as not so much your child, but you finding with finding passion. Um, I can tell you this. Make a list of all of the things that you would do for free if nobody ever paid you to do it. And honestly, for me, even if I won the lottery today, I'd be back here, maybe not next Friday, but the following Friday. And I probably will come next Friday. I'd just be laid out with money around me. So don't act, don't think I'm acting funny. I'm just letting you know that I hit the jackpot. 
But I would still be over here talking about ADHD because the fact that I won the lottery would have nothing to do with the fact that so many children struggle with all sorts of uh, learning disabilities and special needs every day and adults too. And that's what I'm here for. All right, let me get out of here. I love y'all so much. Miss Sadie says, thank you, Dr. Brandy. Have a great weekend. You too. All of y'all have a great weekend. It's a long weekend. It's a holiday weekend. Make sure that you're being safe. That means no drinking and driving. That means uh, watching your pork intake, y'all. We are killing ourselves, right? Uh, because we're eating too much salt. We're not eating the things that we know we should not eat. You can have anything in moderation. It's the excess that we do that we do too much with. So make sure you're watching your diet this weekend. Please make sure you're watching your nose. Put a mask on when you're out shopping, when you're out having fun. And for heaven's sake, please go ahead and get your vaccine if you've not gotten it. The very life that you save may be your own. And if you're pregnant, the life you save may be yours and your child's, right? Um, so mama says, thank you for being you. Oh, mama, thank you for being you. You are absolutely amazing. Y'all, my mama, y'all see my mama got that picture of me when I was probably like in college or something. I love her to death. She is a sweet lady. All right, let me get out of here. I am Dr. Brandy B, your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist. And through my Facebook live streams, my, um, book, Shine, Understanding ADHD So Your Child Can Be a Star, my speaking engagements, uh, and just about anything else that I am doing. If you see me in the street and you want to talk about ADHD, I may make it short now because if I got them kids with me, they are making noise and I'm probably embarrassed like every other parent is when they're in the store. So I'm trying to get out of there real quick, but make an appointment. Um, let's talk about it because I want your child to get better. Okay, y'all, let me just tell y'all this real quick. You know how to find my book, www.shineadhdbook.shop. I have a seven day, um, and I know I've been talking about it since I launched my book, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm over here with all these jobs and all these babies, but I have my date uh, almost confirmed. The way you want to keep up with me is to be on my email list because I'm going to release that date this week. It's a seven day challenge where for seven days in a closed group setting, you will get to talk to me in an intimate setting where we will be talking about parenting things like the behavior chart. We're going to be talking about um, ways you can help your child. We're going to be giving out homework assignments that you can actually start while we're in the challenge. And then about three weeks later, I'm going to have an event where I'm hoping to have educators, uh, other physician friends to stop by and talk to you all as parents, to talk to you all as students, to talk to you all as moms, to talk to you all as wives. So we can make sure that we're whole, right? Because I have started doing more educating parents and telling them, go get therapy. Go get therapy yourself. Being a parent is hard. Being a parent of a child with a special need is harder. Um, so you need some help with that. And it can't be me. It can't be me. All right. So make sure you go over to shine. Uh, I'm sorry. ADHD success dot me. ADHD success dot me. And when you sign up over there, you're going to get a video with seven steps for success in the classroom. You'll also get on my email list to keep up with me outside of this Friday at noon because there's some good stuff coming up. Then I've got some products coming up that I'm going to launch. Um, Black Friday. Oh my goodness. So I got to get busy. I got to get focused. And I don't even have ADHD. So I can't imagine how people with ADHD are walking around trying to keep it together. I just have a lot going on. So y'all, y'all be prayerful for each other. Smile at somebody. Cause you know, never know people are stressed out y'all. So please just go ahead and smile at somebody. Miss Michelle says, have a great weekend and a great holiday. My sister, uh, Angela says, Awesome, as always. Tell the people up there on the job they need to be listening because I know it's the people up there that need this. All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here. I love all of y'all, every single one of y'all. Share this video with somebody, y'all. Just go on and share it on your page, somebody else's page. Send it to somebody's inbox. Tag some people. Let them know because this is good stuff. The midterm is here. We've got to go ahead and nip this stuff in the bud so that we do not end up calling me in crisis in December, wanted me to work a miracle. I remember, physician, not magician. I'm not going to be able to make it happen that quickly, but beginning right now, I can do it. We can do it 
together. You can do it. Your child can do it. And that's what I'm excited about seeing. All right, guys, I'll see y'all next week. Be safe out there. Wear your mask, get your vaccinations. Talk to you later. Bye.